basically to conclude this whole talk about branding, and hopefully it wasn't too long, it's all about taking something that you have. We all have something to deliver. We all have something to deliver. If you're a coach, you know, you're delivering the opportunity to, to play better golf, to have more fun, uh, to get husbands and wives and families closer together through the sport, to be able to help kids get through college with scholarships, to be able to help someone alleviate back pain or lose weight if you have a nutrition program, to think differently. I mean, the value that we provide as instructors is tremendous, whether you're a full-time coach or you're not. If you're on the operations side of things, you provide a lot of value. I mean, why do people come to the club? For entertainment, right? The golf business is the entertainment business. And the sooner that you can get that mindset, and then learn how to leverage these skills that you have to provide value, to create traffic that you can eventually monetize, it's really amazing what you can, what you can do. So um, the thing I want you to take away from this talk is abundance, possibility. When you learn more, you, you earn more. And um, there's a saying, which used to be true, but it's not anymore. And the saying is, you know, keep doing what you're doing, and you'll keep on getting what you're getting. Well, that's not true anymore, because if you keep doing what you're doing in this marketplace, you're going to keep getting less and less and less, because other people have figured out faster ways to take more and more and more. So you got to be proactive. you got to be offensive with your strategies. If you don't know how to do this, that's OK, because there's people that you can find that can help you with this. You know, I contact other people all the time and I ask them questions. You know, how do I increase the SEO on my site? What do you think about this? What do you think about that? You know, none of this um, have I been able to do on my own. Uh, I've gotten a good head start and I started adopting that entrepreneur's mindset, um, but it wasn't until I started really thinking about what I needed and what the industry needed that I've been able to really turn the corner. So, you know, that's what we're here to do um, as Squared Up, whether you engage with us or not, it really doesn't matter to me. If you want to call me directly and say, hey Jeff, this is my business, I got some questions for you, I'll be, I'll be happy to help you. I mean, it's something that I enjoy doing, and like I said, getting into this business day one, it wasn't something I thought that I would do. I was just about giving golf lessons, trying to fix hooks and slices and make that ball sing through the air, and never in a million years did I think that I'd be in a position now to, to consult and, and help other pros. And, you know, a lot of the stuff that we talk about might seem a little bit daunting, like, holy cow, I mean, how am I going to do all this stuff? You just got to have a plan. You got to have a vision of where you want to go. And then you have to start taking, you know, action as it relates to making that happen. You know, so I spent a lot of time with the sports psychologist working with our junior golf camps, and it's really helped me out in the things that I do. But he said that in order to be successful, to realize your true potential, you have to make these, these two critical shifts. Uh, one shift is to make the shift from hoping to knowing. And the other shift is to make the shift from wishing to doing. You know, so when you, when you hope that things will be okay, when you hope that you'll be successful, um, you know, not very inspiring viewpoints to operate from. When you know that things will be okay, when you know that you'll be successful, when you know that you'll be in this position that you envision, you operate from a totally different, different mindset and your energy is very, very positive. Uh, Gary Player, when he won his first Masters, he said he walked out on the grounds and he looked up at the scoreboard and he imagined his name in gold at the top, glittering. And he said, once I saw that, I knew I would win. I just knew it. It was impossible for him not to win. So he was able to play free and loose because he believed that it was his destiny. So we all in here, we have goals. And whatever your goal is, you know, think about how you approach them. If you're hoping for it to happen, and try and switch it over to the, the knowing mindset. Wishing to doing, that's a big thing too, because wishing, um, again, is weak like hoping. Um, only when you create action will the path present itself. And that, that's a big lesson, because a lot of times we try and wait for things to be perfect in our lives until we actually engage in something. Well, when I have a little bit more money, when I have a little bit more time, and the thing is that things will never be perfect. They'll never be lined up to where you want them to be for you to take that first step. So the thing that I've learned to do is, you know, when I want something, I take immediate action and I, and I go after it. Um, and a lot of times, I don't know what I'm doing. It's not planned out, but I'm just creating movement, momentum. And this guy, this friend of mine who's a sports psychologist, he has this, this perfect um, uh, story about himself and his, uh, his little um, baby nephew. And uh, he says he was sitting there, he was watching a, a football game on television, and 
his nephew is sitting there crawling around and he's causing a big fuss. You know, he wants something. You know, he's like, what, what, what do you want? You know, he keeps sitting there and he's drinking his beer and the kids, you know, you know, reach in and he looks over and he's like, what do you want? And the kid is looking at some shiny keys that are on top of the mantle by the fireplace. And he starts reaching for him, reaching for him. Now, in that state, that, that child has yet to be conditioned that uh, he's not tall enough to get those keys. And as long as he reaches, he'll, he'll never get them, never get them. But he created an action based on a desire. I want the keys. So what does he do? He starts moving, starts making some noise. And what did my friend do? He goes, oh, you want these. There you go, sport. And that's how things work. You, you don't have to have a plan. You just have to start moving towards what you want. And when you move towards what you want, even in small steps, the universe tends to conspire in your favor and present you with solutions that you didn't even know existed. You know, so all this seems like a lot of stuff, but that's how I've gotten from being that guy that was scared and disappointed and afraid of, of failing to being in a position where I'm really excited every day with what I do and I'm excited to do even, even more. So start making those changes, take that first step. If I can be of any help, uh, please contact me. And uh, thank you so much for your attention during this, this first segment.